Joining me right now is CNN safety analyst and former FAA safety inspector David Susi and the editor at large of CNN Business, Richard Quest. Richard, let me start with you on this. I mean, what are folks saying happened here? I mean, why, how, why did that plane just light up like that? Well, we know why it lit up. It lit up because of the hard landing. Having initially come into land, the plane, as you look at the video, the plane bounces back up into the air. It comes down with a tail strike, which then collapses the landing gear, thus, um, thus rupturing the fuel tanks, and that's where you get the, flare, the fire from. That bit is, un, you know, it is quite clear. What we need to understand is twofold. Firstly, this alleged lightning strike, and how and why, you know, what happened. The plane supposedly was hit by lightning. And then the second thing is, how much control did the pilot have? When the pilot came into land, his nose first. He realizes he brings the nose up. There's this very hard landing. The plane bounces up. Oh, why did he, the pilot, at that point, not go around? Mm -hmm. Was he able to put power on, climb out, and have another go? That's really the issue. So there's lots of deep aviation issues here as to what caused the plane to bounce, to go around, uh, 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 and to burst into flames. And then, of yeah. course, you have the issue of, for example, uh, the, the speed of the rescue. David, what are you looking at here when you see, you know, after all the investigations you've done, you see this, and what are your questions? Well, much like Richard said, the bounce is what's in question, but getting to that bounce is what is really disturbing to me because by that point in time, the aircraft should have already been prepared to flare. So what happens a lot when you come into land is you have to prepare for that landing miles before you get to the runway. So if you have too much energy, if you have too much, you can't flare out quickly and therefore the nose hits the, the ground first and reacts by a bounce. Now with the go around situation, can you really apply power and go around? With these engines on this particular model, to even if you put full throttle, it takes some time for those engines to react and give you full thrust. So perhaps that wasn't time enough as the aircraft had bounced. The reaction time of the pilot and his ability to get that throttle back up again to make a go around, I'm not sure whether it was attempted or not, but even if it were, I'm not certain it would have saved this from happening. Oh, that's important. Uh, Richard, I want to also ask you about the latest with the Boeing 737, the Boeing MAX 8. Um, the company, Boeing, is now acknowledging publicly that it knew a year before the two deadly crashes that there was a problem with a warning indicator on these planes. You know, 340 plus people died in these two crashes. What do we know and what don't we know that actually means? Okay, well, let, let's, just, let's just cut straight to the chase on this one. There is something called the angle of attack disagree. It tells you if the three different sensors are not agreeing. That is standard. There is something called the angle of attack indicator. It tells you the, where the wings are. That is optional. The two were not working properly as intended. But it's a red herring. They are nice to have. They're important to use. But they do not affect... Boeing is right. There is right. Pilots have flown for many decades without either of these instruments being there. They do not affect the fundamental safety of the aircraft. And in any case, the real issue here, Kate, is pilots didn't know what they were dealing with. They didn't know about MCAS, this safety yeah. uh, machinery they had, and more importantly, MCAS was far more powerful than they'd ever intended. That's the real issue. All of this other stuff is just showing Boeing's sausage making, if you like, underneath. Well, David, I mean, what do, you, what do you make of it? I mean, you hear that they knew about a problem a year a year in advance. That is bringing no comfort, no matter what, to these three the families of these 300 plus people who died. Well, I do agree with Richard. If you use the standard system of determining safety, an indicator problem is not something that calls, causes fatalities. It adds information to the pilot. But as we all know, with any accident, it's never one particular thing that causes an accident. It's accumulation of all of the things that led up to that moment when the pilot made that decision. So are they contributory? Yes, they are. But as Richard said, the MCAS system was never intended to go to the full 9% deflection 
which was impossible to overcome by the pilots on both of these fatal flights. So it was never intended to be that. That came after the fact when they did the flight testing, and that was never communicated back to the engineers who could have identified the problem. So there's a, there's a lot of issues here. It's very highly technical, but in fact, there was a mistake made, and that is the ability for that MCAS system, which was initially qualified as a Class B or a non-fatal accident yeah. issue, uh, became that accident issue as things went forward with the software development. Hmm. David, Richard, thank you. I think the problems are mounting, not letting up there.